welcome you all in the 13th lecture of electronics measurement and instrumentation. This is the third lecture of CRO. In previous two lectures, I have discussed about the, the measurement of different quantities of the an electrical signal, the how to measure the signals, amplitude, the frequency, the time period, how we have to uh, compare two signals by using Lissagius pattern. And uh, in first lecture, I have discussed about the front panel control. In this lecture, I will discuss about the heart of the CRO that is the cathode ray tube. So, cathode ray tube is a very essential part in a C CRO. So, in this lecture, I will give a brief introduction of CRO, the construction of cathode ray tube that is CRT the electrostatic focusing in CRT, two types of focusings are generally used, one is electrostatic focusing and other is electromagnetic fo focusing. Electromagnetic focusing were done in old type of uh, uh, TV CRTs and uh, when uh, the screen size is bigger, then electromagnetic focusing is done, but uh, in uh, CRT since uh, the cathode ray tube of the ca cath uh, CRO the screen size is small, it is approximately 100 mm by 100 mm. So, here we are using electrostatic focusing. Then we have to see the relationship between the deflection voltage and the deflection in y direction that, that takes place in the CRT. So, as we know the CRO consists of uh, the main part is uh, CRT, then the vertical deflection system, the horizontal deflection system time based generator, triggering circuit and power supply. The uh, vertical deflection system uh, basically uh, the input signal is applied at the vertical deflection system and this vertical deflection system is responsible for the presentation of the input signal on the screen. Horizontal deflection system generally produces a time based uh, circuit uh, sawtooth wave signal and that signal will uh, basically display the, uh, the input signal on the x axis. So, horizontal deflection system is responsible for the reproduction of uh, electrical signal at the x axis and vertical deflection system is responsible for the signal reproduction of the signal at the y axis. Then there is time based generator and trigger circuit, these are used to synchronize the horizontal deflection system with the vertical deflection system that is the time based generator system with the input signal. So, main part of the CRT is the electron gun assembly, electron gun assembly, deflection plate assembly, fluorescent screen, glass envelope and the base of the CRT. In electron gun assembly basic components are indirectly heated cathode, control grid, focusing anode, pre accelerating and accelerating anode. A deflection plate system assembly consists of vertical deflection system and horizontal deflection system. The vertical deflection system is basically uh, the signal amplitude, it uh, defines the signal amplitude and the vertical deflection system uh, is placed basically the vertical deflection system in CRT, there are a pair of plate which are placed horizontally like this way and this pair of plate placed horizontally and it controls the movement of electron in the vertical direction means the electron will move in the vertical direction, but they are placed uh, in horizontal direction. Similarly, horizontal deflection system uh, in CRT it has a pair of plate which are placed vertically like this way and it controls the movement of electron in the x direction. Then there is fluorescent screen, uh, the fluorescent screen uh, is, uh, is uh, the fluorescent screen produces uh, uh, basically it converts the electrons that, that is the electrical signal that is passing through the electron into the fluorescent uh, screen means uh, it represent it into the uh, generation of the waveform on the screen. Then glass envelope is evacuated glass envelope under inside which the all the assemblies are placed. Base in general uh, in CRT uh, all the connections are made through the base. Electron gun assembly 
has indirectly heated cathode, control grid, focusing anode, pre accelerating anode and accelerating anode. In some CRT, uh, the pre accelerating anodes are missing and the focusing anode and accelera uh, accelerating anode is present. This is the diagram of the CRT cathode ray tube. So, we can see here that it has electron gun assembly, then deflection plate assembly and then acceleration and screen. So, as we uh, see from the diagram that this cathode is indirectly heated cathode means there is a if we can see uh, this is the heater heating element and it is uh, and this is the cathode uh, this is the cathode and this is the indirectly heated cathode means there is a filament which is uh, heating the cathode so cathode has a very low work function means if very small voltage is applied at the cathode then this cathode will produce electron so it will emits electron and there is a control grid. All the uh, cathode or control grid or accelerating, pre accelerating anode and the focusing anode are, uh, are of made up of cylinder in shape. So, we can see here that the cathode is made up of cylinder in shape with a very small aperture at the end. So, it produces uh, emits the electron from there. The control grid is kept at negative potential. So, the electrons that is produced by the cathode whether that electron will go move towards the screen or not that is decided by this control grid. So, if we keep control grid uh, generally it is kept at minus 2 kilo volt if we increase the potential at control grid more negative then what will happen electrons are negatively charged and cathode is kept and this control grid is kept at negative. So, it will repel the electrons. And so, by changing the voltage of the control grid, we can, con uh, we, can uh, we can see this is the control grid voltage and it is variable voltage. So, uh, the intensity or the brightness can be controlled by uh, changing by varying the voltage of the control grid. If we want more intense beam to be at the screen then the control grid voltage should be less negative. Then there is a pre accelerating and accelerating anode. Pre accelerating and accelerating anodes are kept at uh, high positive potential approximately 200 watts or 200 volts and because of this positive potential the electron which is leaving the cathode will accelerate it and will move at very high velocity because of the positive potential. Positive potential attracts electron. So, pre accelerating anode and accelerating anodes are kept at 2000 volt whereas, uh, the focusing anode which is in between the pre accelerating and accelerating anode as we can see in next slide uh, it is kept at 500 volt. So, uh, because of this these are at, uh, these, these are attracting the electrons with the positive potential and since accelerating anode is at positive potential, pre accelerating anode is at positive potential and the focusing anode is in between that and that focusing anode is uh, if we say comparing with the accelerating and accelerating anode, pre accelerating anode it is at negative potential. So, the uh, electron concave lens is formed there as we can see in next chapter, uh, next slide. Then there is a deflection plate, pair of horizontal deflection plate and pair of uh, vertical deflection plate. Uh, as we can see here, th uh, this, these are the pair of horizontal deflection plate that controls the movement of electron in the x direction, but they are kept vertically. And the vertical deflection plate that controls the movement of electron in y direction, they are kept horizontally. Then there is a screen the function of a screen is to convert the uh, electron that is impinging on the screen into the light energy. And uh, so, this is uh, also a diagram of a picture tube here we can see that uh, there is a pre accelerating anode and accelerating anode. So, here we can see that all the accelerating pre accelerating and other anodes are uh, cylinder in shape. So, indirectly heated cathode is also cylinder in shape and uh, 
to have a very low work function means ki it can produce a large number of electron it can emit a large number of electron at very low voltage approximately 6.3 volt and the current is 600 milli ampere for this a barium and strontium oxide coating is deposited at the end. Similarly, control grid is uh, coaxial with the CRT screen and coaxial with the cathode and it is a uh, nickel cylinder and uh, the uh, length and dia of this nickel cylinder control grid is 15 mm by 15 mm and it has an aperture of 0.25 mm at the center. So, control grid's basic function is to uh, define the number of electrons that are going to strike on the screen. <laughs> then there is we can see here there is an aqua deck coating here and there is a phosphor coating inside the glass uh, this uh, screen is of glass inside that glass there is a phosphor coating and inside that phosphor coating there is an aluminum coating or any conducting material coating. <laughs> so, here we can see that again focusing anode is of uh, cylinder in shape and it is kept at 500 volt focusing anode has a variable voltage here we can see that it is a having a variable voltage. So, by, uh, by varying the voltage of focusing anode we can change the uh, focus of the electron beam uh, that is uh, uh, at the that is uh, striking at the uh, screen pre accelerating and accelerating anode is kept at 1500 volt and deflection plate uh, the vertical deflection system has uh, has to receive the signal from the uh, input signal the unknown signal is received by the vertical deflection system and then it is uh, fed to the vertical plates and this horizontal deflection system uh, receives signal from two sources either from the uh, unknown signal that is applied at the vertical deflection plate or from the external sources such as horizontal amplifier and other external sources. <coughs> now, as I have discussed uh, this de deflection plate assembly if uh, here uh, this uh, two plates which are uh, placed horizontally and they are acting as a vertical deflection plates pair of def vertical deflection plate and this plate upper plate is kept P 1 plate is kept at positive potential with respect to P 2 plate. So, what will happen the electron which is leaving the pre accelerating and accelerating anode are attracted by the upper plate upper vertical plate. So, if the electron is moving at this point and is striking uh, the uh, screen at y 1 point. If we reverse uh, the battery terminal then what will happen the, it will strike at y 2 point. Similarly, in second uh, diagram we can see the uh, this is the horizontal deflection plate pair of horizontal deflection plate that are kept uh, vertically and they control the movement of electron in the x direction. Again here we can see that this plate h 2 is kept positive with respect to h 1. So, the electron beam is moving on the x axis at x 2 point it is striking at the x 2 point. If we change the if we change the polarity then it will strike the x 1 point. It means horizontal deflection plate basically controls the movement of electron in the x direction and vertical deflection plate controls the movement of electron in the y direction. Fluorescent screen is generally just uh, CRO we are using uh, that is of 100 mm by 100 mm and if a uh, higher if uh, the size is more then it is slightly curved at the end. So, that the electron beam cover whole uh, screen <coughs> and it is made by pressing molten glass and inside surface of the uh, screen is coated with the crystalline phosphor crystal coating of 2 to 3 micron thickness and uh, inside that uh, the uh, phosphor coating there is a uh, activator coating uh, conductor coating material is there that is aluminum, silver, copper, chromium and all there. So, uh, what is the need of aluminum layer? When electron strikes on the screen on the phosphor then what will happen since electrons have very high velocity and when it strikes on the screen 
then what will happen? It will generate some heat. If the heat is not dissipated, then what will happen? Uh, the that area will be burn out. So, to stop burning, to avoid burning, we are using aluminum coating. So, aluminum or any uh, conducting material, uh, heat conducting material basically dissipate the heat into the atmosphere. Second, when the electron strikes, uh, some of the electrons get uh, uh, get covered, it means the electrons cover the screen and then the next electron which is emitted from the uh, cathode will not strike the screen because there is a negative charge layer is there. So, that uh, charge layer is also uh, dissipated by the aluminum. And second, uh, if uh, the light is scattered, when the beam strikes the phosphor with the aluminized coating, the light emitted back means when light is emitted back from the phosphor skin, it is again emitted back by the aluminum. Then there is an aqua deck coating I have told in uh, last uh, slide. So, it is made up of aqueous solution and it is connected to the second node means positive voltage. Then if uh, the electron strikes on the screen, the secondary emission electrons take place and that secondary emission electron uh, electrons are collected at the uh, in front of the screen. So, they will repel the electron which is moving from the cathode to the screen. So, that uh, that electrons because it is positive, uh, it is connected with the positive charge. So, it will absorb all the electrons. So, aqua deck coating is used full for the uh, for the uh, collecting the secondary emission electron. <coughs> then glass envelope, evacuated uh, glass envelope is there and inside that all the components are there. Base, base are generally the connections are made various part of the connections are made from the uh, CRT to the different part of CRO through the base. Power supply uh, high and low voltage power supplies are required, high voltage power supplies are required for the purpose of the voltage uh, for the different type of anodes and cathode of the uh, CRT and low power supplies are used for the uh, to uh, supply different circuits of the CRO for the uh, um, uh, if for example, uh, amplifier there are so many amplifiers, vertical amplifier, horizontal amplifier then there is a delay circuit, triggering circuits are there. So, for uh, to uh, uh, supply the voltage we are using low voltage power supply. <coughs> then electrostatic focusing as the screen of uh, CRT is small then electrostatic focusing is done. As we can see in figure, um, if uh, we remember in, uh, from last uh, slide that uh, there is uh, uh, the pre accelerating and accelerating anodes are kept at positive potential and the uh, focusing anode is at uh, with respect to accelerating and pre accelerating anode it is kept at negative potential. So, here it is shown that an electron which is at the rest position this is placed here and these are the two plates one is minus uh, E and other is placed as plus E. Suppose this is a pre accelerating anode and this is our focusing anode. So, this uh, electric field lines which moves from between these two we see that uh, they are moving a straight line, but at the end they are curved like this way. So, if we uh, connect all the equipotential potential surfaces all the points that is at equal potential, then we will see the curved line at the end. So, the, this the second diagram we can see that this is the focusing anode and this is the uh, this is the focusing anode and uh, this is the pre accelerating anode. So, what happened uh, there is a these are the electric field lines which are curved at the end and because of this uh, the equipotential lines are also curved because they are at 90 degree with this electrical field lines. So, uh, this these equipotential lines between pre accelerating anode and focusing anode and from focusing to accelerating anode they form electronic concave lens like this. Now, if the signal travels from one surface to other, 
then what will happen? Uh, we know that the sign of the angle of incident oblique sign of the angle of refraction is equivalent to the velocity of electron after leaving the surfaces divided by the initial velocity of the electron. <laughs> now, we have to find out the relationship between the, uh, the deflection voltage uh, means the input voltage that we are applied and the deflection takes place in the screen. So, here we can see that when the electron beam is leaving uh, the accelerating anode, at that time the electron beam is moving in the x direction only and there is no acceleration force on that beam. But when the electron beam, since this uh, deflecting plate, <laughs> vertical deflecting plates is uh, this is uh, the upper plate is at plus uh, E d and the lower plate is at 0 volt. So, the electron beam which is entering inside this deflecting plate will get attracted by the upper plate. Then at that time, if we see that uh, at this portion, uh, this is basically making it at, as a parabolic, uh, this shape is parabolic till the completion of this uh, plate. After this plate, it again moves in a straight line. So, here there is some portion which is of parabolic in nature and then it is moving straight. So, when we uh, join this terminal, uh, this point to uh, this, we, if we draw a tangent to the, that parabolic, it will, uh, it will uh, reach at this position. So, if we consider here that E A is the voltage of pre accelerating anode, E is the charge of electron, M is the mass of electron, V O x is the velocity of electron when entering the field, E d is the potential at deflecting plate and small d is the distance between the deflecting plate, L is the distance at the center from the center of plate to the screen and D is the deflection in y direction. <laughs> then when electron is entering in the uh, deflection plate, uh, vertical deflection plate, then it will lose the potential energy that is P potential energy is equal to E into E A. And then that uh, the what the loss is in the potential energy that is gained by the kinetic energy because uh, of the energy converse, uh, conversion, then uh, K, uh, the kinetic energy we can see half m v square. So, it is half m v o x square then from these two equation we will get V o x is equal to 2 E charge on electron E a y m half square. So, now the electric field intensity in y direction epsilon y that is equal to uh, the voltage between the deflection plate vertical deflection plate divided by the distance between the deflection plate. Now, the uh, force acting on the electron f is equal to V no that is E into epsilon E and by uh, placing the value of epsilon y, it is E E d by d. Now, force acting is F is equal to m a uh, mass into acceleration. So, by substituting this value, we will get a y is equal to E epsilon y by m. Uh, then, as the initial velocity in y direction when it enters uh, under the deflection y deflection plate, then it will get the velocity in y direction, otherwise the, uh, the velocity in y direction is 0. So, we know that y is equal to u t plus half a t square, but here u is 0. So, y is equal to half a, a y into t square, then by putting the value of a y, we will get this. Now, we have to put the value of t square. Now, we know that the uh, electron displacement in x direction is constant, there is no force acting. So, x is equal to V o x into t. So, from this we get that t is equal to x by V o x. Now, we putting the value of this t in this equation. Now, by putting the value we will get y is equal to half E epsilon y by m x V o x square and we know this is the equation of parabola 
and so when we draw a uh, slope of this point we get dy by dx we will uh, differentiate it dy by dx and we will get this. Now, putting x is equal to L d in the above equation we will get 10 theta is equal to this value it is E E d L d by m d v o x square. So, after leaving the electrostatic plate the electron will move in the straight line. So, if we see here x is equal to y by 10 theta. So, now substituting the value of y and 10 theta we will get L d by 2. So, now this value of x is substituting in the above equation. So, we will get d is equal to L 10 theta is equal to this one and after substituting all the values we will get the deflection is equal to L e d L d by 2 d E a. Now, here if we see in this equation uh, the L is constant, L d is constant, 2 uh, just d is constant and for a particular value we will keep E a that is the uh, voltage at accelerating plate it is also constant. So, we see here that d is proportional to the E d that is the deflection voltage. So, we can conclude from the above equation if we keep uh, accelerating voltage constant and the dimension of CRT is constant then the uh, uh, then the electron beam is directly proportional to the deflection voltage. In this discussion we have there is uh, in, in any equation there is not a portion of E by m ratio it means uh, the ion burn is not there. There are two more term one is the deflection sensitivity. So, deflection sensitivity of the CRT is defined as the vertical deflection of the beam on the screen per unit deflection voltage. So, S is equal to d by E d and if we put the value of d by E d then we will get this value L L d to by 2 d E a. So, sensitivity can be increased by decreasing the accelerating voltage E a, but it will decrease the brightness of the spot on the screen. Then the deflection factor is 1 by s and we will get the deflection voltage. So, this is all about the CRT and how CRT works, how the deflection uh, the electrostatic deflection takes place and how the input voltage is proportional to the deflection in y direction. Thank you all.